It's meant to be a last resort. Conditions are often appalling. But the number of homeless families in emergency bed and breakfast is at its highest for more than a decade. It's only legal to house families there for six weeks when nothing else is available. But a report out tomorrow warns of a worrying trend. The local government ombudsman says many councils are flouting the rules, complaints are increasing, and they have evidence of the serious impact on the families involved. Our social affairs editor Jackie Long has this report. A life lived in one room. So this is it, is it, the whole... Basically, yeah. Yeah. My daughter sleeps there. And she's 12? She's 12. My son, me, my husband, we share this double bed. And he's 10, so they're not... Babies? No, no. Three months ago, Sky worked full-time as an office manager and lived with her family in a privately rented flat. By any standards, it's not a lot of room. But when the landlord wanted to sell up, they were left homeless. She lost her job, and now the family home is this bed-and-breakfast hotel in East London. Uh, they're missing a lot, you know. They're missing their own space. They're missing... I just feel like a really bad mum, a really bad role model to have us all living like this, you know? She says it's not just the state of the place that concerns her. It's trying to keep the children safe, too. Mm, there's people here that's on um, tag. The police are knocking all hours of the day and night. You know, there's... I've seen people at the door <laughs> oh, saying he wants drugs, basically, and they put families in it with children, impressionable children. Uh, that's not good. The family have already been at the B&B twice as long as the law allows, with no sign of getting out soon. Oh, you know, people on, on, on benefits end up here, but I was working, I ended up here, so it's very easy. It's so easy. And easy to end up here, but not easy to get out. Oh, yeah. So once you're in, you're in, there's no way of getting out. I feel like I'm doing a prison sentence. This is my cell. The room next door is home to Anna and her four children. They've been living there for six weeks. So, Anna, what, for you, is the worst thing about living here? The worst is the mess, uh, mouse, cockroach, bed bugs. They don't feel comfortable, just crying all the night. They don't want to be here. Anna, who wanted to remain anonymous because she was worried she'd lose her place at the bed and breakfast, says they too were left homeless when their landlord decided to sell up. On housing benefit, no other landlord would take them. I wake up as well in the night crying and just thinking about how my babies have to live now. Redbridge Borough Council, which houses both Anna and Skye, told us they only use bed and breakfast when they have no alternative and try to move people out as quickly as possible. They also offer families a rent bond to help them secure private accommodation. Housing families in bed and breakfast accommodation is supposed to be a last resort. The latest figures show more than 2,000 families with children living in B&Bs. That's the highest number in a decade. Giving evidence to the Ombudsman, local council said increasing homelessness and pressure on services leaves them with little choice. But for the Ombudsman, that's not good enough. Around 700 families are currently in bed and breakfast accommodation for longer than the six-week limit. And she says that has to change. One damaged family is one too many, isn't it? I fully appreciate that local authorities are under financial constraints and in some cases they've had difficulty finding appropriate accommodation. But actually, they sh that's no justification for breaching their statutory duties. Hello from our humble abode, Colditz. This is where Gary and Karen Marquick and their three children lived for nearly three months. That is what was provided for Oliver. Apparently a suitable bed there. That's a suitable bed for a toddler. Daddy raid. Now settling into their new permanent home in Dorset, the family ended up homeless after Gary was forced to give up work through illness. Reliant on housing benefit and with no deposit, they couldn't find a landlord willing to rent to them. A bed and breakfast hotel was their only option. That's the energy. It was hard to keep the normal things like... Um, we had to sleep in the same room, eat in the same room. There was nowhere for the children to actually sit and eat other than on their beds. And all of the time I felt this awful guilt that I wasn't providing my children with, with proper food, nutritional food. Karen says if her family can end up homeless, anyone can. People often 
think of homeless people as being down and out people who lead chaotic lifestyles and have got themselves into that situation through wrongdoing. And it's not that case. And what we actually felt was after being in bed and breakfast for not more than the three weeks, really, that we were starting to lead chaotic lifestyles. Mm. I felt that we didn't have control over our life anymore. Taking families out of bed and breakfast accommodation must be a priority for council, says the government. It's offered £2 million to help. But with homeless numbers rising and a chronic shortage of homes, will it be enough to stop families ending up in B&Bs that can be anything but temporary? <laughs>